Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our May edition of the IT Documentation Users Group webinar. I am Sri, and I'm the Community Manager at Uriga Process. Uh, the, the IT Documentation Users Group is one of two communities that I work very closely with um, and enjoy nurturing. It comprises people from all over the world, really. Uh, MSPs in the US, uh, people who work um, in different parts of Europe and Asia, but everyone has something or the other to do with the art of documentation uh, in IT. I'm really excited by today's webinar, uh, where we have Luke Whitelock from IQ in IT, um, an MSP based in the southwest of London, talking to us about Hoodoo. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of talk on the group about uh, different documentation platforms, the options you have available, uh, regardless of whether you're new to the game or whether you've been doing it for decades. Um, so Luke is the perfect person to um, talk about this. He's the CTO and co-founder of IQ in IT, and he contributes to various open source MSP based projects and he makes trips to help MSPs uh, in his spare time. Uh, he has done a lot of work with Hoodoo um, and created and maintains the Hoodoo PowerShell module. So without further ado, uh, Luke, welcome to the webinar for this month. And let me say again, very excited to have you here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Hi. Um, so we've advertised this webinar to be 30 minutes, but that is in no way a hard stop. If you have questions, please keep them coming um, and we can throw them up during um, the webinar while Luke shows you through Hoodoo um, or we can address them at the end. Um, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, but please feel free to ask questions in the comment box of wherever you're watching from, be it YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook or Reddit, um, and we can, uh, we can pull that up on the screen here. So um, over to you, Luke. Cool. Um, so yeah, so we moved to Hoodoo, I think it was February last year. Um, it was just after they'd released their API. So it was at that point where I was finally feeling like it was mature enough to actually use. Um, so I think I'll just show you, talk you through some of the basics of it and then um, can ask some questions and go from there. Um, so when you log in, you've got your core dashboard, which is showing you all your things like um, recent articles, things you've visited the most, um, everything that's been going on. Um, similar to other documentation tools, you've got a company view, which is where you then get the breakdown of a uh, company's documentation. You also then have a global knowledge base, um, which I have one folder and one document in here at the moment. Um, but yeah, so if you look at a customer, uh, you get some basic details. Um, if you put in an actual address, it puts a little map there. Um, so you can see where the customer is and just gives you an overview of that customer. Um, Hoodoo works a little bit differently from some of the other tools in you've got a limited amount of core assets here. So passwords, processes, knowledge base articles, websites, explorations, and then external sharing. Um, then everything else, like your contacts, your configurations, that's custom asset types. So you can split them up a little bit more than you could in other tools. And it's a little bit more flexible. So starting out, you've got. The basic assets is similar. You've got fields that you can set on it, configure to have rich text and various different things. Um, those are all pretty easy to customize. Um, so you just have, can rearrange the fields and set different field types. Um, so you can then also group up the different asset types. It's just a bit easier to organize. Um, then, so one useful, so the next useful thing is you've got processes. So these are similar to like checklists and stuff in IT Glue. Um, you've got the concept of global processes, which is like your templates. So if you wanted to use like a user onboarding template, you can create that into a specific customer, which uh, you then can customize just to be that for that one customer. So you'd edit and add any custom tasks you wanted. And you could then convert that to a template to reuse multiple times inside the customer. So like if you wanted to do an onboarding one, you then just apply that to a customer, uh, to a specific person. Uh, what is very cool with this is you've got a sharing link. So if you take that link, you can then chuck it in a ticket to the customer and they can just have a live update of everything that you're doing. Uh, to see where you are. Um, 
So it's got some built-in website monitoring things. So you can chuck in customers' websites. It will go pull DNS records and just log those for you, monitor if services are up and things like that. Expirations are useful. So this can be set to any date field on any asset, or also it monitors things like websites, SSL certificates, things like that. So um, what we use it for mainly is warranty tracking on devices. So we add a custom field to our desktops and laptops and servers, use um, a PowerShell module, which then goes and populates all of those, looking it up from serial numbers. Um, so yeah, you can then set up webhooks and alerts of that. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm, I'm, I might keep interrupting you and hopefully <laughs> no this problem. is not regressing a little bit, but someone's asked a big question uh, here. Uh, why did you, why did you select Hoodoo? Uh, <laughs> Like okay. what, what made you, um, it, was, it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, so we were on IT Glue for years. Like when we joined IT Glue fairly early on, it was an amazing product. They were doing something in the indus industry, which no one else was. Um, I absolutely loved it. Then at some point in time, probably about a year before Casero announced they bought them a year ago, um, all the developers started halting. It slowed right down. Like there were just nothing happening on it anymore. They just abandoned it basically. Then you started to get new features showing up again, but it was like half-baked things like my glue and network glue. And it just made me really angry that they had such a great product and they just left it to stagnate and weren't, wasn't going anywhere. Um, so I've been keeping an eye on Hoodoo for a while. And it was, I think it was about Christmas of 2020. They finally released a version which had things like API and a whole load of bits, which finally got it close enough to IT glue to make it viable to jump over. Um, so as soon as we could, um, got an apprentice to go through all our documentation and manually <laughs> copy it over. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, after that, I then wrote a migration script to help other people rather than me. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't like Kaseya as a company. I just, IT Glue was just dying as far as I could see. And, um, yeah, I've not, not missed it at all since we left. <laughs> it's definitely a hot topic. I think this advocates for both Hudu and IT Glue and other platforms as well on the, on the Facebook group and, um, they all have their pros and cons to share, but I hope this will, I mean, I know this will be extremely useful for anyone who's considering a change. So thank you. Hmm. Um, so, what was I showing? Uh, so other cool little things. So for example, you can favorite pretty much anything inside Hoodoo. So I could favorite a company. I could favorite a specific asset. I could favorite a knowledge base article. Um, I had one. Um, they've recently done a rewrite of the editor. So now it's just a really nice editor. You can do pretty much anything you want in it. It's got proper syntax highlighting for code. You can just edit the source code directly. Um, so yeah, a lot, they, the editor originally was a little bit iffy, but it's a lot nicer now they've done their rewrite. Um, you've got all of the built-in things like being able to create a public shareable link, just to chuck that to your customers, just for your document. Um, you can relate to different items and different assets throughout Hoodoo, uh, tag files, leave comments on it. Um, there's also a cool flagging system where you can, I think I've not got any crates at the moment, but you can set a flag for like, if it's out of day or if it's a legacy thing, which needs archiving, uh, inside Hoodoo, rather than deleting things, you've got, um, this concept called the museum where most of the time, unless you choose to do a hard delete, like if you've had a GDPR request to, for someone to be forgotten. Um, most of the time you just archive things and then they disappear in the museum. So you can easily go back and see the history of anything that you've deleted and removed. Uh, external sharing is a cool thing where you can just send, like if you're generating a password for a customer, you can just chuck in that, generate a link and it was sent to them and share it to them. Um, so where Hoodoo starts to um, where I start to really love some things that you can do in Hoodoo is with the integrations, rather than it creating a whole asset and populating fields in the asset, it will add a card if there's a matching asset to it. So, um, what you can start to do is build up, you'd have a single person asset, but then you'd have like your CRM integrated into it. You could have anything else integrated by and that all tag to that one asset. But then what you can do is add on your own custom fields to that asset and start to extend it. So if we have a look in here, so for example, if we look at this one, uh, this is the card that you get from data RMM. 
So it pulls in some info, puts it in this card. But then what I've got is a custom field here, which I'm then using a script to populate the open alerts from Datto for that device. Um, in my production instance, we also have things like Intune linking into it, any open and related tickets from Halo linked in, um, and various other bits and pieces. So it's just you're able to build up a lot nicer single pane of glass view of uh, what's going on with a specific thing. Um, so if you have a look, for example, here. Um, so this is then using another script that I've written, which will document details from Microsoft 365 into Hoodoo. So this will do people and devices. So any engine enrolled devices uh, do relations between them. So if it had a related device, you could you'd see any phones or anything that's or computers that the users logged into here. Um, do some quick links to jump into the actual endpoint things. Uh, and then, for example, here's a card which has been populated by the Microsoft 365 integration that's built in. Um, so that only you had to set it up per customer. So my one's using CSP, so you only need one app instead of a million apps in each customer to do it. Um, I know you have a then, ton of scripts on your website, Luke, but um, are all the scripts that you mentioned just now, you know, um, as you go, are they all available on your website? Or? Yep. So I think everything on here is on my website. Um, the Microsoft 365 one is one I've done fairly recently. And I've just written it as an as a function app where you can click a button and it will do most of the work for you in setting it up. Right. Um, anyone's watching, um, you can head over to mspp.io. That's uh, Luke's personal website if you're interested in any of these scripts. And there's a lot more um, to there with Hoodoo and otherwise. Um, so my favorite thing about Hoodoo is um, though this concept of magic dashes, where you can create these via the API. So it's something you have to do yourself. It's not something you can create manually. But this is that you have a single pane of glass view of bringing together all the different things that you have, just to quickly see if there's any alerts, um, view all your Microsoft users, be able to jump around them quickly. Uh, for example, here I've got um, Aruba Instant on. Uh, so you can just link around, jump into different assets here. Um, uh, you've got a whole concept of like asset tagging, so you can see all these um, different assets linked to this one, which is an overview of the whole site. Um, so I think uh, so, so some questions. Uh, so what features lacking in Hoodoo that's found in IT? So at the moment, I think the only thing that's really missing is there's not a browser extension, so you can't auto fill passwords. Um, we don't use Hoodoo for passwords. We keep it separate. Um, there's a brilliant comment I saw on Reddit the other day of someone, there's people discussing whether you should store your passwords in a documentation thing. And someone said, you don't want to keep the map next to the keys. It's like, you've effectively left all your documentation with the passwords. If that gets compromised, they've got everything they could possibly need to breach. So, um, yeah, I don't particularly like that one. Uh, uh, another thing that's missing is there's not anything like network glue. So you can't just install an agent and document, uh, um, a network at the moment. Um, you can, it integrates with various different RMMs. So you can start to build things up. Um, I'm planning to do something in the script at some point, but not got around to it. It's also a comment here about um, a manual process. I think referring to Hoodoo, but um, uh, so this is it. actually coming in the next version, I believe. Okay. They're going to let you have template um, knowledge base articles. So that's a good solution for that. That's a quick answer. Uh, I'm just going to throw one more question up here. <laughs> Is there any technical difference between creating a related item link from a person to a device versus a device to a person, or is it the same thing? Um, no, it's the same thing. You just say they're both assets inside Hulu. So you say link this as asset ID to this one. If you're doing it by the API, you just click on the relation thing and you can choose to link whatever you want. Um, so you just search for whatever other asset you'd like to link, link it there, and that will then link it on both sides. Uh, you mm -hmm. can do then asset tags inside a field, which then just lists it on the far side. Right. Um, right. I'll let some more questions flow for a while uh, uh, before we get back so, to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so the search, um, you've got, it's okay. I'm not going to say it's great. I don't think any documentation platform particularly does search that well. Um, who do search? So you, it'll spit it out between different things. You can choose to do whether you want to search just inside the specific customer uh, company, or you can do an all field search, which is then looking at every single field and inside the assets and stuff. So it's doing a full text search already across everything. Um, I mean, I think most of the issue with the search comes from, it's not like Google where you've got hundreds of people clicking on documents from specific searches to be able to build up that machine database learning of, well, this, someone searched for this, this is the kind of thing they want. So yeah, it's a hard problem to solve, I think for anyone, but who do search works well enough. Um, we find it useful to do, make sure that the folders and the knowledge bases are properly structured. So we'll have a template folder structure we use for everyone. It's, um, we also, I've done script recently to generate a table of contents, which will then just do off your folder structure, just give you a linkable table of contents in each root of knowledge, each knowledge base root, mm -hmm. just to make it nice and easy. I think that addresses one of the questions that came up on Facebook as well. Um, basically, whether it, it reflects IT glass and you type a word in search and it searches that across, it will find, us, find it across all documents and devices. And I think what you said is exactly that. Yeah. So it's not ideal, but it definitely, it works. Oh, well, I don't know what IT glue search is at the moment, what state it's in, but it's a lot, I found it a lot more useful than IT glue search was when we were on it. On, on this note, um, and I know we have uh, a little bit to go as well as you talk about Hoodoo, but, and at the risk of stirring the pot, what's on your wish list? Like, what do you wish Hoodoo had? And like, you wish badly that they really had, and it's a significant gap right now. Um, what I really want at the moment is APIs to create processes. Hmm. So that process of being able to create a process, then grab the like shareable link. That's not in the API at the moment, because then you can start to do some really clever stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, that would really open things where... up. Your your constraints are almost minimal then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Uh, yes, yeah, I forgot what I was saying. Um, sorry. Other useful things are you've got full revision history, so you can easily jump back to see what a document was at a specific point in time. That was apparently an empty version of the document. Um, yeah, it's very useful. Uh, another useful thing they've added recently is this view who has access. So if you've done something sensitive that you think you've locked it down enough, um, you can actually just check exactly which users have access to be able to see a specific document or asset. Um, generating QR codes, I love that does. Generates a PDF for every QR code. I haven't had to use that one ever. Um, so I saw someone just asking about permissions. Um, so they've just done a full rework of the permission system. So it's a lot, lot nicer than it used to be. Uh, it basically all works off groups. So if you do a test group, uh, so it works in two different ways. So this is my favorite part of it is you can have a company, basically a group, which will include companies or a group, which will deny access to companies. So you can either have, if you've got like an internal, a couple of internal document things, which you don't want everyone to have. But other than that, you want everyone to have all your other customers. You just do a deny of saying, deny my internal company. Whereas if you've got a user who you only want to be able to access like two or three customers, you can then change it to an allow mode and just put those in. Um, you can right. then set login schedules. You can then do a whole load of other restrictions. So you can restrict them to specific um, asset layouts that they can use. You can remove access to specific things. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot more powerful than it used to be. Uh, you can then also specifically restrict or allow on individual assets. So yeah, there's a lot of options to be able to Yeah, get that, that looks very powerful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I managed to go down from having an absolute nightmare of the groups where we were trying to, we had a couple of customers which only certain people could access. So mm -hmm. every single time that we added someone, we had to go and add it to the allow list. And it was, <laughs> yeah, a nightmare. Uh, but now I just have a one group, which I say, don't let these, don't let people see these ones and then can just get on with things. It's easier saying no. <laughs> are there any more questions? There are a ton of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible to create password folders at a global level? 
for organi organization level, I guess. Uh, you it's have... always compared to the glue. So yeah, you have a my vault, which is your own password, and then I believe they're only at the customer level at the moment. Um, again, we don't store passwords in Hoodoo, so it's not something I played around with in depth, unfortunately. Right. I think it's probably only custom level. I, they might be changing it with the addition of the browser extension, um, but I haven't seen anything about that at the moment. I, I think it's like you probably just have to do an internal company if you wanted to have internal passwords shared across everyone. Um, so yeah, so Hoodoo is, you've got the option to self-host. So if you need ISO 27001, Cyber Essentials, et cetera, um, you can just self-host self it, uh, self it, and then uh, it's up to you to secure it as much as you want. They also, they don't advertise it, but they do do a cloud version as well, which you can get if you just email them. I think it's a little bit more expensive, um, but they've just been up an instance. I think it's on DigitalOcean they do. Um, What would, what would some words of advice be for anyone who's looking to transition? You know, they've used another platform for years and years. Um, they've got their best practices, you know, everyone's uh, in a comfort zone or not, but you know, they want to make the move. I, I know you have a script and all, but you know, there's <laughs> other. So I would say, take it as an opportunity to go over your documentation, review everything, make sure your structure still makes sense for you. Um, update everything to make sure you've not got screenshots from control panels which are 10 years old now and don't actually line up with what the current experience is hmm. um it's yeah it's not too bad to move over it's a fair bit of work it'll take a lot of time um my script will just do a lift and shift essentially of your flexible assets and your knowledge base um yeah. but i still say it's something you want to review um for me a core cool part of documentation is it's only ever as useful as the last time it was updated. <laughs> so I like to automate as much as I possibly can. Yeah. So everything is just updating itself. Yeah. The human element. Um, yeah. Yep. Especially around your um, asset layouts. Like that's a, so, automating as much of that as possible is an absolute essential thing nowadays, I think. Yeah. So does Hoodoo have all the compliance regulations such as ISO 2701? Um, so again, I don't think they have them themselves, but then you sell, you help self-host it. And so um, it's then you can make it compliant. So we've got ISO 27001 um, and Cyber Essentials, and we have no issues just because we keep it all locked down and secured ourselves. Um, I also have this question asking about a migration path from IT Group. Um, so yeah, so you can use my script, which will take a whole load of um, the work out of it for you, hopefully at least get a start and to it does that bring over um, all the information that they hold in it glue so it brings over as much as i could get via the <laughs> api from it glue or their export right. and then around the limitations of hoodoo so another thing that um i wish hoodoo could do is let you do file uploads so you can't upload attached files um but i just generate a list at the end saying all the things that it can do which you can then go you go do manually um but yeah i'd take that as a base to get your core bits of stuff over and then i'd take it as a chance to review everything and just go through it again and reorganize. Okay. So I mean, it it is a fair bit of work, and I mean, I yeah, think it's to to assume it wasn't the worst. Thing. Moving, probably, we yeah. moved PSA last year as well, which yeah. was a lot more painful than wow. moving documentation. Yeah. A year of change, <laughs> some big moves. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would imagine if anyone is in the mindset of making a big change, like changing a documentation platform, that that surely has a business need behind it, and that might translate to other things. Um, it probably is multiple things happening at the same time, like it did for you. Mm. Yeah. Um, so um, to make it easier, I used to use all of um, Calvin from Cyberdrain's IT glue documentation scripts. So one of the first blogs I did was I rewrote all of those scripts to work in Hoodoo. So there's a good lot of a base to get you up and running with automated documentation if you're already using that. Okay. So we have a question about the portability of um, information here. A uh, question about whether you can export documents and assets and import them elsewhere. Um, for example, to other Hoodoo instances, or just save it for importing later? Uh, yeah, so because you're self-hosting, you can do uh, database backups, and then all your images are either stored on the local file system or they're stored on S3 compatible storage. So 
for moving to another Hoodoo system, it's fairly straightforward. You've just got everything there. Um, for importing and exporting, you can just choose how you want to export things. You can do automate exports to an S3 um, storage uh, and do various other bits and pieces to get it out. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else around that. I think it's mainly around the export data. Um, the API is a lot more open. You can then with IT Glue, so it's very easy if you wanted to move between like merge two instances, you could just write a couple of scripts and just grab one and chuck it into another. Right. Um, we as a team at Eureka Process, we use IT Glue, so um, this <laughs> is um, this is really exciting for us because we definitely have um, a lot of clients ask us about who do and what the experience would be like. Um, so this is a question from our team. So, <laughs> so there's some pre-built templates to get you up and running in the first time. Um, so if you wanted to do like computer assets, you can create one here and it will uh, create your base asset with some fields. Um, I'd say for you probably want to start out with just some empty assets for things like people and devices, synchronize over from your PSA, over from your RMM, because uh, then you get the cards and you don't actually need any other fields. Then you can just okay. start to add in other fields as you want. Like you could add in the notes field, you can add in any custom bits and pieces around it. Um, so yeah, I'd definitely say start with the integrations, get your data into it that way, and then start expanding from it from there. Thank you. Are there any other resources, um, you know, other than people signing up for Hudu and being in touch with Hudu themselves um, or using your website? Um, any resources that people should know about um, or even experts, um, you know? <laughs> there's a Hudu subreddit, which is okay. fairly quiet, but there's a lot of resources in there. Um, they've added some new bits and pieces around training into it, I think, nowadays. Uh, so I think there's like, a, yeah, there's like a learn Hudu, which will talk you through different bits and pieces. Um, there's a fairly active, um, channel on MSP geek for Hoodoo, where, um, some of the guys who work on Hoodoo are, so it's a good place to give feedback and things. Um, there's also a, um, feature request, um, page somewhere, I think the roadmap page, um, where they actually update and do things, which is a miracle compared to IT Glues, which is just a graveyard of <laughs> things that everyone's wanted for years. I think the most complaints I've heard from people about ID Glues definitely about the feed, because it always comes down to someone saying, oh, they put in a feature request box when, so um, it always ends up in that. But I, I, yeah. I mean, I've seen things getting resolved, but... Yeah, it not, seems like uh, that's they've had a bit of kick up, <laughs> kick up the butt recently and seem to be trying to make an improvement, but... I guess well, there, there is fine competition, yeah. Yeah, there's finally a decent competition out there, so. So is this a per user model or um, how does it work? Uh, yep, so I believe, last time I checked, um, I haven't actually been doing it in a while. Uh, so self-hosted is $31 a month for three users and then $15 a month for additional users. But you can, there's a concept for your customers um, called the portal, which I might not have turned on on here. Mm. I'm trying to remember where you turn this on. Uh, so there's a, it's a customer portal where you can then invite specific users from the company. Okay, so just a front end um, where you decide what they yeah, see. Yeah, so that's where you can do the equivalent of uh, a MyGlue, so you can share assets, you can share passwords, hmm. um, and you can spit that kind of stuff out. I just I, can't, I don't actually use it myself, so I'm trying to remember where it is. Um. <laughs> no, you can always uh, post. Have a check later. <laughs> yeah, um, but we know it's there. Um, yeah. So to answer the question, yes. Um, you can give clients access to a portal and mm -hmm. that that is a free user correct yeah that's free okay. so you customize what exactly you want to see in there um 
and they can do it. I can't remember. Um, yeah, I can't. Sorry, I just can't remember where it is that you turn it on. <laughs> Um, I think the main the main draw for us for today's webinar is just, I mean, it's one thing having a company rep come in and talk about their product, but the value we have from someone like you who, you know, uses it like you made the shift and you, you've made it work for you, you've done all your scripts and you're actually using it day to day. I mean, the value we get from an opinion based on that is much more than, you know, someone from company could come and um, talk volumes about the product. It's just not the same. Um, and I think that's, that is reason for all these questions. Um, yep. Uh, so you've got, um, what's MFA? Uh, so you've got standard MFA, um, you can do duo integration, uh, and then you can do full summer less or so. So for our production instance, we have it integrated into zero AD, um, then leverage all the conditional access. Any uh, scripts on their way, considering that this is your hobby? <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the moment, I'm actually working on a script for better alerts from data RMM because they just introduced webhooks. So I'm doing some clever stuff with their API to make their alerts a lot better than the standard email ones. Um, for Hoodoo, I am currently waiting on a new feature in the API to get inline images. Um, so I can synchronize all of our knowledge base between Hoodoo and Halo. Because hmm. um, Halo's got some cool features where it will suggest knowledge base articles based off um, ticket contents. Oh, so nice. we want to start leveraging that, but then keep the documentation mainly in Hoodoo, but then just have the indexable stuff linked into Halo to bring that up. Um, and then I did um, a Cloudflare integration a week or so ago for it, um, which is quite useful. And then I have a list of about a hundred different things, which I've half finished and got planned, which hopefully I'll find time for. I, I mean, want to try and do. Uh, sorry, one of the things I, I was just to... going to say, it's only a matter of time before, um, your personal website has a feature request or like a script <laughs> request. Yeah. I want to try and do a replacement for, um, network glue. Cause I think that'd be quite fun. Doing some clever things of network scanning and bringing on assets that way. Be a right. fun challenge, I think. Um, so I, I know you joined the IT documentation users group at some point, but I do know that you're not there all the time. Um, yeah, but for people, <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, the first person to say that and uh, <laughs> you won't be the last person I hear saying that either. Um, there's a shift in more, more areas than MSP documentation platforms. So let's just leave it at that. <laughs> um, but the best place to get hold of you is through your personal website. If for, just for the viewers. Uh, yeah, drop me an email or um, leave a comment on there. Or yeah, I'm pretty active on MSB Geek on there. It's an easy way to get hold of me. I'm going to throw up your website here for anyone who's watching. Um, these are um, the websites. IQ and IT is uh, the company, the MSB in London that um, Luke co-founded and runs. And uh, the one on the, the QR code at the bottom is for Luke's personal website, where you can find all his work and the scripts, etc. I'll give you a few seconds here if any of you are pulling that out the screen or getting the URL down. Um, and this this video will is being recorded, so it will reside on um, our YouTube channel. It will be accessible through our Facebook group, the IT Documentation Users Group. And this is another thing that I'm excited to announce. Um, we um, announced this um, last month at our IT Doug webinar. And um, Alan Edwards, our founder, um, is releasing this book soon. Um, it's called Process and the other P word. So please use the Q Q QR code, sorry, or um, go to eurekaprocess.com slash pre-order to make sure you're on the list to be notified of when the book is out. Um, we are very excited about this. And we also have a lot of stuff happening on our calendar. We have uh, in-person events on June 2nd in Dallas. Um, that will be hosted by us. It's just going to be a networking event. If you want to meet um, our team, please um, meet us in Dallas. Uh, you can use the QR code on the top left there to 
visit our events page and RSVP to any of these events. June 6th and 7th, we're going to be at the Channel Pro SMB Forum in Dallas. And the 20th of June, we'll be in uh, Minneapolis, um, an industry event. Uh, we'll be there, network, um, talk to anyone who wants to meet up with us there. The next month, we'll be having uh, one of our very own, Matthew Gallini, who is with Divergent IT. Uh, Matthew, uh, in his old words, likes to stir the pot. So he's uh, graciously accepted to talk about Line Guard, which he uses um, uh, with his clients. Um, so June 29th, that's the last Wednesday of June. Uh, we have Matthew Gallini talking about Line Guard. Uh, the next month, July 27th, again, the last Wednesday of the month. We will be talking about documenting KPIs with Drive Gauge, and that will be by our very own Adam Edwards of Eureka Process. Luke, thank you again. This was amazing. Um, this was really, really good value for um, everyone who attended today, um, Eureka Process, and all our guests. Um, and I know this is a significant amount of time from your day, even though it's the end of the day, given the time difference. <laughs> uh, but appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And uh, everyone, see you the last Wednesday of next month. Thanks.